As bread goes stale, it gets harder. But as a cookie, say this Oreo, goes stale, it will often soften up. Why is that? This question came from a viewer, and as I was digging up research to craft a response, I realized that what I thought was going on here wasn't. And it turns out that once you actually understand the science of staling, so many things start making sense. This, this, this is Minute Food. Let's look at the Oreo first. It's pretty dry. Scientists measure the amount of water in foods in kind of a complicated way. But the bottom line is that there's generally less water available in an Oreo than in the air around it. Even if you live in a super dry place like I do, which means that moisture will move from the air into the cookie. So as an Oreo ages or goes stale, it will tend to get softer. Bread, on the other hand, is a pretty wet food, much wetter than the air. So water tends to move from the crumb, the bread's super moist, fluffy inside, to the slightly drier crust, turning it kind of leathery, and from there to the even drier air around the bread. I always assumed this movement of moisture was what made bread get harder as it goes stale. But if you look at the numbers, most breads don't actually lose that much moisture, even over several days. And way back in 1852, experiments proved that bread that's hermetically sealed and physically can't lose any moisture to the air will still get harder over time. So something else must also be going on in bread as it ages. To understand what, we have to back up a bit to bread dough, since that's where the science of staleness actually gets cooking. Flour, like all grain-based products, contains starch. And when you add water to starch and heat the whole thing up past a certain point, the starch granules start to absorb the water. The water sneaks into the nicely organized starch molecules inside each granule and starts bonding with them, loosening up their structure. This process is a big part of what makes bread moist and tender. Fresh bread, at least. Because starch molecules really like order. Energetically, they want to get back to a more organized structure. So as bread sits around, the starch molecules start reorganizing themselves back into crystals, squeezing out the water that was making them all loosey-goosey. That water doesn't necessarily go far. In fact, some of it gets trapped within all those newly formed starch crystals. But at this point, it's no longer free to interact with the starch. This process, known as retrogradation, basically tightens up the bread's microscopic structure. And some of this firming up is a good thing. Like right when bread finishes cooking, it is so soft that it's more or less impossible to cut. That is why you want to let a fresh loaf sit around. Wait, wrong loaf. Okay, that's the one. Letting a loaf sit for an hour or two after baking gives it a bit of time to retrograde, hardening it up just enough to slice it neatly. But the longer bread sits around, the more retrogradation happens, and the firmer and crumblier the loaf gets. Moisture loss makes things even worse, as do some other processes that scientists are still trying to figure out. But retrogradation is a major part of how, and why, bread gets harder as it stales. Which isn't just a deliciously nerdy fact to break out at your next cocktail party. Understanding retrogradation is like a cheat code in the kitchen. Like, since cooler temperatures make it easier for the starch to recrystallize, putting your bread in the fridge will make it go stale faster. But super low temperatures freeze the water in place, stopping the retrogradation process almost entirely. So for long-term storage, bread does best in the freezer. And retrogradation is actually reversible. If you bring up the temperature of stale bread, you basically reinitiate the process of allowing the water in it, some of which, remember, is trapped within the newly formed crystals, to interact with the starch molecules, loosey-gooseying them up again. So by reheating bread, like in a low oven, you can, at least temporarily, unstale it. And if you've ever noticed that bread from the grocery store stays soft longer than the homemade stuff, that's because commercial recipes often include extra ingredients, like enzymes and emulsifiers that interfere with retrogradation, keeping bread fresher longer. You can also put retrogradation to work for you. If you've made fried rice, you probably already have, whether you knew it or not. The reason most recipes suggest to use day-old rice is that the starch in the rice will have retrograded, going from moist and sticky, a recipe for disaster in the pan, to nice, firm grains perfect for frying up. And when you're making pasta salad, you can try overcooking the pasta by a few minutes, because as soon as you chill those starchy noodles, they'll start retrograding and harden back up to just the right consistency, rather than getting too hard. And as a bonus, retrograded starches get digested differently by your body, so they can have health benefits too. The science of retrogradation has even come in handy in court. I learned about this from Lisa over at Minute Earth, so I'm gonna let her tell it. The details are kind of complicated, but because of some intricacies in the UK tax law, chocolate-covered cakes are not taxed. 
but chocolate covered cookies are. In order to increase revenue, the UK tax board was trying to get Jaffa cakes, which were at the time marketed as cakes, reclassified as biscuits, turning 0% tax into 20% tax. The company pushed back, arguing that unlike biscuits, which get soft as they go stale, Jaffa cakes get harder as they stale. Which brings us full circle to the beginning, right? Like bread, cakes get harder as they age because of retrogradation. And while cookies too contain water and starch, cookie dough doesn't usually contain enough water to interact with all the starch. Plus, other ingredients in cookie dough compete for the little water that is there. So very few of the starch molecules in a cookie get loosey-goosey in the first place. And as a result, they never retrograde. So a cookie's staling is almost exclusively due to moisture migration. The company won, by the way. Jaffa cakes still count as cakes. So retrogradation can even help settle philosophical matters. Too bad we can't use it to settle other food-related debates, like whether a hot dog is a sandwich. When it comes to that one, we are still in a stalemate. Speaking of sandwiches, sometimes that's all I can get on the table between work and school and soccer and swim team and dropping baguettes all over my kitchen. Unless I've just gotten my Cook Unity subscription. Then we're eating this amazing mole braised chicken from Chef Kevin Meehan, or Chef John DeLucci's Papardelle with pork ragu, or any of the other hundreds of meals developed by award-winning chefs from top restaurants. Now, I will be honest, I am generally super skeptical of meal services, but Cook Unity's meals are fresh, not frozen, and they're shipped in sustainable packaging. And on a busy weeknight, there is nothing better than being able to put something fresh and delicious on the table in just a few minutes, with no gross shopping, prepping, or cleaning up afterwards. If you want to make dinner time easier and tastier, use the link in the description to try Cook Unity. With coupon code MINUTEFOOD50, you'll get 50% off your first order of restaurant-quality meals delivered fresh to your door. Thank you, Cook Unity, for sponsoring this video.